Let's throw them far and wide and add a custom throwable projectile to Minecraft. Do you have questions about Minecraft modding or just want to hang out and see some cool creations from other people? Maybe you want to plug your own mod or suggest a tutorial? Well, join my Discord server linked in the description below. However, be sure to properly read the rules and then you'll be welcomed to a cool place all about modding and Calvin Joe's content. Alright, we found back Intelligence more and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom throwable projectile to Minecraft, which has sort of like one tiny caveat that one might have been struggling with, but let's take a look. So the idea of our custom projectile is going to be a dice. So we're going to throw a dice, basically right clicking with an item, it's going to throw the projectile and when it hits a block it's going to spawn a dice block with one number randomly up now of course that's just one example basically that we're doing right here so when it comes to the block spawning and stuff like that that is all custom specific for this example but let's take a look at the entity itself because of course a throwable projectile is a custom entity so for that in the custom package in our entity package we want to make the dice projectile entity class over here this will extend the throwable item projectile. That basically is the thing that we have for right-clicking an item. We want to implement the get default item method as well as create constructor matching super. It doesn't matter too much which one we take because we have to add a second and a third one anyway. Now this constructor is fine and we can duplicate it twice over here in this case because the second constructor is going to be just having the level and then the first parameter here in the super. We can't fill that in yet so that's going to be fine and then the third constructor is going to be level as a first parameter and then a living entity called living entity as a second parameter. And once again the first one can't be put in then we want to pass in the living entity and the last one is then p level so that's basically the three constructors that we're going to need for the default item we're going to make a deliberate error and then we're also overwrite the on hit block method and that's actually also a pretty cool thing you can take a look at the different methods that you can overwrite so for example you have the on hit on hit entity even a thunder hit can be hit by a projectile so you can see that there's a couple of different hit methods that basically are called right so when a entity is hit or when a block is hit and then you can do things in those methods for the on hit block method like i said we're going to be spawning a block we're going to start with this already so we're going to say we're going to negate this dot level that is client side so once again please take note of the exclamation mark here negating the client side so everything inside of the if statement should be on the server then we're going to say this dot level dot broadcast entity event we're going to pass in this and then do a three dot cast and we're going to cast this to a byte here in this case and then we're going to spawn the actual block so there's going to be this dot level dot set block at block position and basically we don't have the state yet so we can keep this empty over here and then flag three so we're going to fill this in after we've added the block of course, for other throwable items or projectiles, you can click on this, press Ctrl H over here. You can, so for example, see the egg, the ender pearl, the snowball, or you can even look at the normal projectiles over here and take a look at some other things here as well. The abstract arrow over here, the rocket entity. So there's a couple of different things that you can take a look at, but that is basically the entity. And now registering the entity, that's where a lot of issues happen. So this is of course in our mod entities class and if I were to copy over the rhino right here and change this up to the dice projectile entity, I'll change this to the dice underscore projectile and the name here of course as well, right? It's the dice underscore projectile and then instead of a new rhino entity, this is a dice projectile entity and instead of a category creature, this is a category misc here in this case. The size is going to be a 0.5 and 0.5 and then here the name of course also dice underscore projectile. Now with this done, you will see that there is an error right here in the new, right? And it says, you know, can't resolve the constructor. And if we were to create it, then you can see we get some issues over here because, well, it just doesn't find the correct constructor. Why is that? How can we deal with this? Well, it is a crazy Java thing, but once you sort of see it once, you're like, okay, fair enough. But it is, in my opinion, pretty crazy. So in the entity type .builder .of, after the dot and in front of the of, you want to put in the angle brackets like a generic and just pass in dice projectile entity and all of a sudden it all starts working. So this basically targets the specific constructor here or the factory that it basically looks for with the dice projectile entity basically then choosing this constructor over here which is going to be the correct one and there you go and that basically registers your entity and now we can go back in here and basically say mod entities dot dice projectile dot get and the same thing here, mod entities.diceprojectile.get. And all of a sudden the constructors are done. 
and there we go. With that finished, let's go to the block and register that. Once again, this is the example block for this specific example. You, of course, don't need a block for every one of your projectiles. This is just the thing that our custom projectile is going to do. It's going to spawn a custom block. If you wanted to just hurt an entity, you override the on hit entity method and hurt the entity inside of there. So do keep that in mind. For our custom block, we need a custom block class, and that is the dice block right here, which will extend the block class. And as this is just an example, I will be copying the contents here over. However, this is all available to you in the description below GitHub repository, of course. So you can basically take a look at that. In aggregate, we just have a facing property right here that's called the number, and that's going to be the number that is pointing up on the actual die itself, right? So you have one through six because this is a six-sided die. So there you go. Now for the registering, I'm actually going to take in the wall hanging sign because we actually also want blocks that register here for our dice block in this case because I don't want an item associated with it. It's going to be our dice block over here and then of course no wood type needed and the block we're copying is just going to be stone that's going to be okay and also we're going to call no loot table here so that we don't have to actually add it to the loot table data gen as well. With the dice block created we can finish up the on hit block method over here. Here we want to say mod blocks dot dice block dot get dot cast and we want to cast this to a dice block here in this case and then call the get random block state method that I have created over here. So you can see we're just getting a random value over here when it's placed down, whether or not we get one, two, three, four, five, or six up on the block when it spawns. Let's also add the item. This is, of course, a quite important step of the process as the item is the thing that actually spawns the actual projectile. So in the custom package, we're going to make the dice item here in this case, extending the item class, and we're going to hover over this create constructor matching super we to override the use method here in this case. Use, there you go. And what's very interesting here is what we're going to do is we're going to press shift twice and look for the snowball item and include non-project items here, snowball item. And literally what we're going to do is we're going to copy the entire use method of this. Okay, and you're going to be like, wait, that's cr pretty crazy. Well, you can see here's the sound that you can change, right? So instead of snowball throw, if you want to have something else, you can change it here. And then here in the is client side negation, right? So when we're on the server, we're spawning the snowball. Well, basically, we just want to change this to a dice projectile entity right here to a new dice projectile entity and then change the name, right? So click on this, press shift F6, dice here in this case. And all of a sudden, it's going to throw our custom projectile instead of a snowball. That's literally all that we need to do here for the item. And if it's going to be a normal, like, throwable item, then this is basically always going to be the same code. With this done, we can then register the item as well. So that's going to be as simple as just getting a item here. There's going to be a dice here, and there's going to be the dice. And this is, of course, a dice item, which doesn't need any of this, only a property. And we don't need to add any particular properties here either. So we can now finish the projectile itself where we can then say mod items dot dice dot get. And that gets you the default item. You don't necessarily need to set this because inside of the dice item class itself, you can see we're setting the item right here as well to the item stack that is in the hand. So that should do basically the same thing, but having the default item doesn't hurt. The last thing for the entity is to connect it to a renderer. So entity renderers dot register more entities dot dice projectile dot get. And then what we want to do is a thrown item renderer colon colon new as this is going to then render the item texture of our custom dice item right here as a projectile. Very straightforward and actually pretty freaking useful. Let's also add it to the creative mode tab right here. That's going to be fine. There you go. So the dice added and then we just go to the assets folder. We'll actually add all of the JSON files manually because in this case, because the dice block is so specific, I don't think that making a custom data gen for it makes sense. The only thing we're going to data gen is the simple item for the dice here in this case, because that's, you know, that's just a normal item, but the rest is going to be done manually. So for that, we have a block states folder again, and this is going to be the dice block JSON. I'm just going to copy this over. This is, of course, also all available in the GitHub repository for you. And then we're going to have the six dice models here for the block in this case. So those are just as easy as basically saying, as you can see, you know, different textures up and down and all of those. So we're using the cube here and then specifying each of the different textures here. And then the textures we also need dice one through six for the block textures, as well as the item itself, which is going to be the dice item. It's, of course, quite important as well. There you go. That's the dice item. 
And that should basically be everything that we need for our custom item, except of course the translation here. In theory, you only need to translate the item here in this case, as the block doesn't have an item associated with it. So that's basically everything that we need to do. So let's run the data over here to generate the item model JSON file. And once that is done, we can go into the game and see if it works. All right, finally back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the dice has been added. So let's throw it. And there we freaking go. A tiny bug has snuck in, as you can see. So sometimes when it hits, it hits like multiple blocks over here. That is because we're not discarding it as soon as it hits the first block. So basically, it sometimes continues to fly. But yeah, there you go. You can still throw it. And you can see how the rendering is just the texture of the item, which is pretty cool. So let's quickly fix this error right here. And then we basically have a custom throwable projectile. It is actually as easy as going into the on hit method right here and literally just calling this dot discord and now all the issues go away. But that's already it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about ore generation. Hope to see you there. So yeah.